So what we're looking at here is kind of a combination of things that we, we learned last week. Like we talked about the, the general setup, uh, the general skeleton of a web page. And actually, I posted that as one of the FAQs on the maxscape.com website. If you go there, um, you'll see there's three or four questions in there now that, that I kind of came up and added some things. But to go over at HTML, open. Down here is close, way down at the bottom. Then we have the head part. Closing the head here. The style and the title. And if you remember, uh, as we mentioned last week, this part that's in between the open and closing title, this is what's gonna show up in the tab. Also, <clears throat> what I did mention last week, is that's what Google, when Google indexes your page, that's what shows up on Google. And then also, um, if somebody were to bookmark your page, that's what's gonna show up as the bookmark. Uh, and I know I didn't bring that up last week. And then we, we briefly kind of talked about styling, but that's what we're gonna talk more about today is your open and close style tags, and then open the body. If you remember, we went over the these and the P's. I uh, don't know if we covered H, I don't think we covered HR, but we covered H1 through H6 and that sort of thing, and then close in the body. You're going to see several changes to the actual document, and some of this stuff is in here twice, and there's a reason for that, because I wanted to show you the various ways that you can use CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and what it's used for is rather than come into every single document and make a change. For example, I have here what's called inline, where it says style, font weight is bold, so that's gonna bold that text. Uh, the font style is italics, so it's gonna italicize that text. A little different than what we did last week, which with the EM and the strong. Uh, if you remember that, if you don't, you can go back and review the video on the website, maxscape.com. This is inline. This is you want to kind of stay away from this type of formatting unless it's absolutely necessary. Reason being is because let's say if you create this page and you go, you know what, I like that layout, I like that format. Let me save it as something else. So in this case, I have it called my web page. Let me call it my web page two, and I'm going to link to it. I'm just going to make the changes I need to make. Change my shockwave graphic to traffic fusion, for example and then just change some of the text. The thing of it is, is now if you want to go back and let's say you want to maybe change, you don't want that to be bolded anymore. Now you're going to have to go into every single document and change it. What a cascading style sheet does is it's a separate file with all of your, all of your things like this, all your styles in that file and it's called out like in this case, I have it commented out, but that's that's how it's going to call it out. And I'll show you that when we get to it. So that means I go into that file one time, make one change, and anywhere it's where it's designated, it's going to make that change to all those files instead of just one. Another way to set up your CSS, again, is within the document by using the style tags. Something, again, that you pretty much want to stay away from for the same reason, but I just kind of did it here to show you. Now, let me, let me show you in here before we actually get into the CSS sheet, because you're going to find a lot of the stuff is the same. Uh, just some of the values I changed just to kind of make it obvious. If you look here, this is using the on the page styling. And then this is using the, the CSS sheet styling. So, what I did here is there's several ways that you can call out. You can use an ID, you can use a class, or you can use just the tag itself. And by tag, what I mean is this being a tag, H1. I used here H2, the font family is Arial, font size is 48 pixels. So in this case right here, the H2, where it says not the biggest, Biggest, not biggest, but in this case, it's even bigger. 
because I styled it here. So that's how you, that's how you style a tag itself. So let me come down here. We have to see if we got any more H2s. No, we don't. Now getting into the classes and the IDs. An ID, in order to call it out in CSS, you're going to use the pound sign. So pound, in this case, bold me, pound italicized, and pound line me. And that's shown here. Bold, italics, and line me. So let's go down and take a look at how we did that. Bold me, italicize, line me. So we're going to scroll on down here. This I can probably get rid of. Make it easier to find stuff. And what we're looking for is ID. Here's ID italicized. Here's ID line me. And where's the ID bold me? Can't find it. Uh-huh. Here we go. Reason being, I ha also have a class set. So ID bold me. That's how you do it by ID. So pound, pound, pound bold me, pound italicized, pound line me. To do a class, you use a dot. So it's dot my class. So anything down here, which I only have the one, Anything down here that's designated as a class is going to take on these attributes. So I wanted to show you this. The reason I got this commented out because there's several ways you can do it uh, to set the font size. You can use a you can use em, which em equals is about a 12 point. Uh, so you can do like font font size colon one em. 2 EM, 2.5 EM, whatever. Then you can use the font size in the point fashion. Let me save this, refresh it. And you can see my class is what we had under the bold text. You see it got really huge. So let's lock that out again and put in the percentage. So now whatever the natural percentage of this bold text is supposed to be, well, let, let's leave that, let's leave it out for now. We'll refresh it, save it, refresh. That's pretty much the natural size of what that bold text is. We just make sure it's under H1. So it's going to be whatever the size of the H1 is naturally. So if we go here and go a percentage and change it to 200%, save, reload. Now you can see the, the bold text has gotten very large. Uh, I don't think I need to go any further, but I will anyway. Let me go 300%. And it's really, really large. So I'm going to comment that back out. And we'll go back to this one. Show you. So look at the blue. When I refresh it, that's going to be 48 point. And if I go to like 12 point, for example, so you can see that each time I change the number under this my class, it's going to change the the corresponding whatever it happens to be. If it's the color, if it's the like here, I have color blue. So if I change color green. Save it, refresh it. Now you can see it's gotten green. So let's make it bigger so we can actually see it. I change it to 24 point. I'm reloading it. Now you can see it's green. Uh, I could change it to black, red. There's there's certain ones that will um, they that actually have colored names to them. But then you can also use a color picker. Now this particular one is. Uh, a program called Coda, and it's um, it's on a Mac. It's a it's a paid program, uh, but this happens to have a color picker, so I can go here and select, and it'll pick any color I want. As you can see here, the hexadecimal value is changing as I move it around, 
And as we learned last week, the first two numbers are the are red. Next two are green. Next two are blue. So whatever the whatever the shading of the hue uh, happens to be, zero two makes up the blue the the red. Two one in this case makes up the green, and F seven makes up the blue. If you remember the uh, those of you who are old enough to remember the old TV sets when you got really really close to them, you can see the, the three dots all over the place. And that's kind of what gave you the color on your screen was by using combinations and brightness of those dots would actually give you your, your picture. I know we briefly touched on this last week as far as the hexadecimal values, but the way they're designated, there's two main ways you can do it. You can spell it all the way out by using six digits or if some of the digits are the same, you can short code it by doing this way. So like EEEFFF, -E -F -F, or you can do like F16, for example. Don't know what that's gonna be, but whatever that red, green, blue combination is, we're gonna save it, reload it, that's what it comes out to be. So that's the equivalent. And if we go to the color picker, you'll see that's the color that that it's picked out from that. Change the font family. Whatever. You, can, you can kind of figure out what the majority of Windows and, and Apple users have on their computer. Those are two of the most common is Arial and Tahoma. And what it's going to do is when you call up this particular page, it's going to look on your computer for Tahoma or Arial. And if you don't have Tahoma, it's going to go to Arial. And most computers, unless people went and deleted it, are going to have Arial. Uh, but you can you can lay this out even further and just kind of put different different type like sans, sans, ser serif, whatever, courier, you know, whatever you want. Uh, you can throw that out there. You can also call in Google Fonts, and we're not covering that today. But you can call in Google Fonts. I don't think I have that in the style sheet. Um, but you can call them directly from, a, from, or you can download the font from Google, convert it, upload it to your server, and reference to it there. So if you want some fancy dancy fonts, um, you can you can set that up there. So again, we're going to do away with this because why? We're going to go into the style sheet. So I'm going to save this. Then what I'm going to do is refresh it over here. And you're going to see you're going to see that it changed. One of the reasons that it changed was because I took that out, and you'll see here one thing I forgot to cover just now was an image. So I'm going to do an, a search for image, and you're going to see in this case it's image source quote, and then the the actual link to the image. This is an off-site link. And then if it was local, I would put wherever it was. So I wouldn't necessarily need this. If it was local to my site, to my server, I would just need that. For example, if that's where it's located. But we're going we're gonna to leave it like that. The width. If you set the width, normally the height will follow. So I'm going to set this to 400 just for the heck of it. And you'll see that you'll see that change. Change it to 800. The top we're talking about the top in, image now. Change it to 800. There it goes. I should have another reference down here where I'm using a percentage. So whatever the natural size of this image has to happens to be, I'm setting it to 50 percent. 50 percent of whatever the natural image size is, and one of the reasons for that is it helps when you start getting into making it, see how the top image really doesn't change at all, but the bottom image does. That's because it's, it's using a percentage of your screen instead of a hard number. So you can see as I kind of move this and, and simulate a smaller screen and a larger screen, that that bottom image changes because I'm using a percentage. If I put it to 100%, Obviously, the image is going to get larger, but again, when I simulate, you can see you can see the uh, image shrinking and growing. All right, so 
those are we just covered the 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 direct inline style we covered the putting it up top here in the head section style now let's take a look at the what I did is I kind of started making a little bit of a structure this is my web page the one we're looking at and then I created a folder for CSS and I created another uh, file called my styles so I'm setting up my my directory now um, so I don't you know it's make stuff easier to find if you get everything in one directory it's going to be more difficult to find if I go back over to this my web page that HTML and I uncomment this and this is how you link to an outside file and in this case the link relation is going to be a style sheet the type is text slash CSS and the reference for it is CSS slash my styles dot CSS again that's just where I happen to have saved it so now let's go over here and take a look at it I all I did was I took the stuff that was in the top section where it said open style blah 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 close style and just pasted it into this document but if you notice I don't have an opening and closing tag here the reason for that because you're using a CSS file it doesn't need that so again, a pound bold me pound italicized pound line me all are referenced to an ID and then my class in this case I can call it whatever I want um, but I just happen to call it my class here uh, you could that's referencing a class and then you can reference the individual tags themselves you can see here I have the image width set to 300 pixels and I have the font size for the h2 set to 200 uh, the my class is set to 48 point to Homa Arial color is blue and then for the bold me italicized line me I just have the text decoration or the font style that is set now one thing I do want to point out is in your document you can only have one ID with a particular name so in this case ID bold me you can't have that somewhere else in your document it won't work a class you can use it multiple times so you can have my class in here on every single one of these lines like I could put in here um, copy this and I'm just gonna well, we don't want it there let's put it let's put it let's put it here so what's my class doing my class is going to make it 48 point to Homa or Arial and blue let me save it go back here refresh it and you're gonna see some changes and again this this information here is what's hard-coded in the other document this information at the bottom this is just so I can kind of show you the difference and this this stuff here is all the stuff that's coming out of the CSS file And I, I really think that's about it. Um, one thing that I could show you that uh, kind of the same as linking to a file, like a CSS file, or linking to uh, an image, like I could put here uh, a href, that's the anchor reference, um, http colon slash slash maxkit.com. And you have to sing it like that when you do it too. And that needs to be a full colon, not a semicolon. And then you can see the image source equals whatever. And where that closes, I'm going to put this in and close the anchor tag. Now the question last week, and again this is on the FAQ on the site, is about spacing and indenting um, one of the things the biggest reason you want to do this indenting like this is it makes your document more readable 
So like in this case, under this section, I might want to have it like this and then indent this to kind of let me know that everything that's in this element where it opens and it closes, it makes it easier to spot. Just like these right here, probably I could move these over. Whoops, helps if I hit the right thing. Move those over, because that falls within the body. Um, the horizontal rule, this I didn't show you this, horizontal rule, border color black, border style dash, border width, two pixels. That's what makes up this. So I could change this to, for example, change this to maybe, oh, I don't know, dotted. And I'm going to make the border width a five, maybe six, color green. Oops, I'm looking at the wrong line here or something. Oh, I, I was. I was looking the wrong way. See it up top? Right there. So let's let's back this off. Show you what it looked like before. Okay, that's what it looked like after the changes. That's what it looked like before. So you can see it's dashed. The border width is only two. And the color is black. So let's fast forward. And we're going to change the border color to green, change the, and actually let me just drop this down a couple. If you remember how to do this, the, the blank return, that's going to drop in two lines. So that now the border width is going to be six, the color is going to be green, and it's going to be dotted. So instead of dashed in black and two, now it's going to be green and six and dotted. Uh, you can You can look up if you're interested in learning more about the horizontal rule styles, there's quite a few styles that you can use. Uh, and the border styles, I'm sorry, the border styles, just do a Google search on border dash styles, and uh, you'll come up with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, one thing that I use a lot, and let me get the link here on the other screen, is this w3schools.com html the language for building web pages learn html html reference you can come in here and look at the html reference and there's all kind of stuff so if you want you can usually what i do i don't even come here directly i'll just go right into google and i'll say like a border styles and then it'll come up and usually w3 schools will come up towards the top if not right at the top and here it will show you uh, this is using CSS and it's going to show you that anything with a P tag is going to have a border style of solid in this particular case you click on try it yourself now you can look and you can see that all this stuff you can see that they're using in this case classes p.none, p.data, p.as, blah, 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 meaning it has a p tag and a class of. That's what the p dot means. It has a tag of p and a class of whatever. In this case, no border. Look over here to the right, it'll show you. But you can take a look at all this stuff at your leisure. You don't even need me until um, it comes maybe to the important stuff. But let's try, let's see what it's going to look like with double. So come back to the documento. Oh, we were using the inline, the stupid inline. Double, save. So you can see it's green and I change it to double. And that's what it's gonna look like if it's, in this case, uh, six pixels and green. I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. I want to try to keep these as short and sweet as possible.